G'day, this is amazing. Like, this is a journey I've been waiting for for about four or five years, and I'm not a shy guy, but I have been looking forward to this particular moment for a whole bunch of reasons you're about to see. You gotta begin with a big family photo. But first of all, I'm so grateful for you, for this room. I only met Mick, what, a few weeks ago, mate? And it didn't take long, said, Phil, you gotta come and speak. And I'm here for a reason. First of all, my purpose is to bring people together globally. And I'm part of a large family of nine. My family are here today. And I have the fortunate ability through a corporate career to systematize this, to make a difference and share it. And to share it with you and take you through the journey I've been through, to think beyond yourself, to bring a way that others can benefit from and take it to the world that's a unique version of you. That's the essence of what I'm doing together to, with you tonight. So this is our team. This photo was taken after COVID uh, gates were open in Indonesia. We I had invested just before COVID hit. I'm the director, as we mentioned, and we had gone through the entire COVID experience to build together a global platform called Aid Hub. Our purpose is to empower um, global sustainability and the thing is, why? Why did I even begin to become part of this platform? A group of people I'd never even met. Our leaders are from the UK, Germany, the US, Singapore, and then we have Indonesia and Australia together as a countries at the heart of this sustainability platform. And basically it's for you. So for each one of you in your enterprises that you've been sharing, you can accelerate your journey. So my, my impulse and when I sort of looked at the best version myself was, how can I possibly grow wealth? Now, I do that in multiple ways. I am a part co-founder of a venture capital company called GenCap Wealth. But how can I also do it globally? I am a um, original investor and the international advisor for Cake Equity, who is helping to grow and enables a startup company's scale. But more importantly, how do we do it sustainably? And part of my background was when I worked with technology and banks, um, investment governance with Fujitsu on how to maximize the positive return for your enterprise, but also with strategy McKinsey and project management Pricewaterhouse, I realized I had all these different skills, how to go from money through to positive outcomes, but bring a group of people along the journey with you and systematize it. Because without scale, we're not gonna be able to move quickly enough to have the impacts that we're looking for. And that's one of the key questions. And I'm, part of my gift is to help you solve that problem, to share your special something, codify it and share it and take it to the world through a platform and engage with people you may never meet, but you can have a system that will incentivize you, that will in fact bring you back knowledge you may not otherwise have been able to access. This is the underlying purpose. So when I invest, I learned to invest not just to get a return on my money, which I can do on the stock market, but I learned to invest to how can I be a smarter fill? How can I help people that I've never really even met before but are extraordinary in their space and in some way make a difference to them and learn through them? Take this positive risk with them. And that's what I've been doing, whether it was Cake, GenCap Wealth and Aid Hub. But then fundamentally, knowledge is great, but ultimately you're there to be part of a community. How do you systematize what you're doing to extend way past what you can touch and who you can engage directly? And so this is why Aid Hub has become the ability for us to measure, track and share the kind of positive impact that I'm looking to aspirationally in my life deliver, but actually share with you. So Aid Hub provides those, those measures for that. Now, another version of the SDGs, you're gonna see a whole bunch tonight, but fundamentally, this is a solution to benefit all. So fun, what we're looking for here is how do we bring the economy, society, and biosphere together and to be in harmony? Aid Hub provides the benefits that you will need to be able to make your contribution, but simply, how do you measure the impact and our platform is that piece that will enable that alignment that you're going to need. So the thing is, we've got a few issues to deal with. The reality is there's a gap. There's a really big gap between our aspirations and our pictures and what we want to see occur versus the reality of the data the, and the metrics to actually act on that. 
So we need to recognize that and that's what part of this form, that's why I'm here, to reach out and say, hey, I've got part of the platform, I've got part of the solution, but you're gonna need to come and partner and work with us. So we need the solutions and the resources to come and partner with AidHub. Looking, there's systems that are missing. There are some of the standards have not yet been set. Like I was just with the Queensland Chief Scientist and says, how do you measure biodiversity? Well, he's had the experience of going out to the forest all his life, but you haven't. How do we put the internet of things, sensors and measures out into the forest so you can start measuring and tracking in a repeatable way and take that and share that data globally? That gap is real and exists and is a big, um, big challenge for us. Then on the other side, there's the impact sector. That's the NGOs, but it's also the um, people focused on you know, corporate social responsibility um, and anybody who's wanting to have that positive impact. But many of these groups don't have that system to actually communicate what they're looking to do and attract the right funding. So in particular, you know, writing proposals to receive that grant funding, to attract investors like um, ourselves, to be able to uh, document the way you uh, measure your performance, to be transparent, to create trust. It's so critical. While we're all aspirational, how do you create trust through the whole life cycle? You see my, my consulting background coming out here, right? But so all the way through. And then also on the donors investor side. So Charles was describing these incredible investors and people are wanting to engage, but they have a responsibility to their investors. How do you show them that you align your outcomes from the companies you're representing, not maybe even at the strategic SDG level, but maybe right down to the local impact level in some cases, depending on the investor's requirements. You need these systems in place. So the donors, the donors are suffering because simply there's not enough transparency. There's sometimes the not enough access to the science behind it, the best practice knowledge. You need an environment to sort of share that. So we're looking to be able to provide through HADUP the ability for you to have that transparency for those documenting those improved returns. So ultimately, we're a collaborative solution. We're here to focus, yes, on the impact that you're here to um, deliver and join you up with the funding, but there's got to be a win-win. You need a way to be able to demonstrate that there's a reason for you all to collaborate together. So the reporting I've mentioned, but also there's the duplication of efforts. We've got to get more efficient. When you look at the NGO sector, there's there's about 10 million organisations globally. So much of that money is wasted through duplication of effort and lack of systems. The majority of system, of NGOs are run off spreadsheets, right? For a lot of this work, that we've got to change that, and it's if we're going to accelerate. So I wanted to give you a little bit complex, but I wanted to show you something real, right? This is a real platform that we've built that we are now sharing and going to go through our, um, our initial release um, stages that I'll take you through. But simply, what this shows you is that on this one, there's 60 plans. When you see a plan, think business plan. It's, the, it's what you need to be able to communicate and raise the funding that you really need for your organization. It also will show you how, down the left-hand side there, you've got the profiles of all the people that you want to engage with. You're going to have a best practice library. So in time on this platform, as people want to not only demonstrate that they've got a, a plan that's worth sharing to accelerate the way we have impact around the world, we may even be able to put in a publishing and licensing solution for you. So you can start publishing and actually focus on that as an area of your profession, your expertise, to get the message out and make it in the same way YouTube does now, right? People create content on YouTube, come and create content on um, AidHub. Then the, and the KPI library. One of the key things you're going to find with KPIs, there's no perfect solutions yet. You've got the SDGs and you've got the indicators, but still everyone's having to work with their own KPIs. But by bringing them together and sharing them, in time, we're going to be able to systematize them. But we need a common place to bring them together. So this, uh, this is a bit of a half screen grab, but still, this is all about showing the um, tracking over time of the funding that came into a program, the delivery of that program, and what, what is still upcoming. So pretty pictures. Um, so this was this one we specifically did in, in Indonesia just recently, and we did it um, with the UN Global Compact. So when AIDHUB was first formed, we collaborated with Jans Vendel, the Under Secretary General. He basically said, 
don't work with the UN. Don't go to the big corporates. Create a solution for everyone else because when you do that, then the UN will want to be involved. Then the corporates will want to be involved. Go do that hard thing first. So through off the back of that, the U UN Global Compact come met with us in, um, in Bali. So they're quite conscious around disaster recovery plans. And in this particular case, it's around volcanic eruptions. So um, sustainability is not just dealing with you know, climate change. It's about all forms of unexpected events and how can we adapt and work together to address and, and deal with that um, disruption. So in this particular case, you'll see how we've lined it to the SDGs. You'll see down on the right-hand side how we track the funding, the budgets, but also what we've done is we create these little data clusters. So if you think about this, it's not just a nice list of to-dos. There's a whole um, database behind around all the critical um, project planning dependencies, the risks, the fundings, the responsibilities. So when you look at this, you say, wow, there's another government bureaucracy out there that can help us respond. The critical difference here is you can put up your hand and say, I can do something about that KPI or that project task. You can integrate your NGO and your business into this and start collaborating together spontaneously once you um, are also using um, Aid Hub yourself as well. And that's one of the transformational things. And in particular, sometimes you start you know, flat-footed, you've got a best practice library to go to. Which is to say, if you've got a problem and we already have it in the library, you're going to be able to pick up that template and say, hey, let's start working collaborating based on that. So this was really the more the detail, just as a, um, a high level. But it's like the, the, my point here was, imagine a normal, boring business plan. This is a bit like that just there. But if you look down the right, that's where you start seeing where we're integrating in all the dependencies, you know, the tasks, the people, the funding. And you'll see that that's in our system at every single section of the um, system. So you can come in maybe and collaborate at the high level or at the individual sections too. Um, there's the best practice library I was just talking about and simply that we've been working um, with um, Waste for Change, an Indonesian group, the UN Climate um, Compact, and um, building out those examples with them. So what's coming up? We've got, um, it's quite a good timing in that um, we've just released our first family and friends. So we have 15 people on board onto the platform. You see here, we have already <coughs> engaged, have a database of 10,000 users registered who want to be interested in engaging on the platform. What we're doing is going through a process and that's globally, right? So we've all, and this is what I almost reach out to you for because we have a global database of, a gr of groups that want this kind of um, ability to collaborate. We also want to be able to share the expertise that's in this room and in Australia. So as this platform builds out, we're wanting to onboard you into this environment. So not only is, will you be a better you, but the groups that you're engaging with can get access to, to your services as well. So maybe a little bit early, but um, that's it. It's simply I'm wanting to share that maybe it's not the sexiest thing in some ways, but the, the leverage, the empowerment of what you're doing, the professionalization of your industry, the ability for you to start leveraging and creating revenue and impact in ways way beyond what your current business model is, is highly empowered by AidHub. It's something I've done elsewhere with Cake Equity and what we're doing venture capital. And there's a, so beyond this platform, there's a wonderful group of people for you to meet and engage with. And I'm here to be on the journey with you. Thank you.